What's up, y'all? Thanks for stopping by the Surge T channel. I am Surge T, and uh, in this video, I'll be doing my rundown and thoughts for NXT UK for the 7th of October 2021. So let's get to it. The finals of the number one contenders uh, tournament to crown the number one contender for the Heritage Cup. Uh, of course, we know in the finals it's going to be Noam Dar and Wolfgang, and I'll pull up for Wolfgang. Now, Jenny, accompanied by jo Joseph Connors, uh, goes one-on-one -on -one with Amelia McKenzie, who's on a bit on a, on a bit of a roll, a bit of a what you call a, a winning streak, uh, taking on all those who would, you know, try to uh, step to her mentor, uh, Meiko, Meiko Satomura, and challenge her for her title. Now, in the tournament, uh, to crown the first ever UK women's champion, Amelia McKenzie and Ginny actually met. It was back in 2018, and Ginny won that day. So, uh, let's talk about uh, Amelia McKenzie. She's beaten Am uh, Amel, Stevie Turner, and Isla Dawn. Now, Amel and Stevie Turner have uh, challenged Mako and did very well for themselves. They didn't win the title, of course. But, uh, yeah, uh, they did very well for themselves. And, uh... The question was posed by Andy if uh, Mackenzie would want to face her mentor for the title and um, what's his name? Uh, Nigel McGinnis said why not and I say that too you know I mean so we'll see how she does in this match now we see uh, Connor is getting in Amelia's face he's interrupting doing what he I guess what he was, he was uh, paid for I don't know He's not a uh, love interest for uh, Ginny, but uh, they've talked about having a partnership, so I guess that's what partnership is about. And uh, then the women's uh, champ comes out, Miko Satomura, and makes sure that uh, she kind of shuts his mouth or takes him out of it. Then she actually delivers a real stiff kick to his back and lays him out. And uh, kind of takes him out of the equation for the meantime. But in the end, uh, the ripcord uh, liger kick... Uh, she hits that, she delivers that uh, to, Jenny does, to um, Amelia McKenzie. And she ends her run of victories, a very impressive uh, run of victories for uh, for Amelia McKenzie. But uh, she falls short this, uh, you know, this time. And then uh, Jenny challenges Mako for her title. And Mako, without a word, just raises her title above her head. And I say that is challenge accepted. Now, Blair Davenport, uh, she boy bursts into the office of Sid Scala. She says, why do I need an appointment? You know, she says, well, I'm not, you know, reinstated, so why should I need a, you know, she bursts in there. And then uh, she says that, uh, well, uh, Sid Scala says that uh, she is reinstated for next week because next week uh, she will face Stevie Turner, who we all remember last week she challenged or said, hey, and reinstate Mila McKenzie, so I mean, I mean <laughs> reinstate Blair Davenport so I can uh, make it so that she will never want to be reinstated again, like that. And Siskala gave her a stern warning to Blair Davenport, says that uh, any future behavior like hers uh, will not be tolerated. Well, it wasn't tolerated this time, he suspended her. Should have said that next time I'll fire you. You know, might be the same. Now, a kid. In a little bit of a vignette, uh, we see him uh, talk about uh, Ilya Dragunov, his future opponent for the NXT UK Championship. And he says that styles make fights. And he says that Ilya Dragunov won't be able to handle his style. Um, yeah, he's powerful, but precision beats power. Timing beats speed. And Ilya, I respect you, but you've never been a champion. I heard that. I'm going, never been a champion? He's talking to a champion. I don't know if that was a, a flub or he should have worded it differently, but he is a champion. I don't know what he means by that. And uh, he says, you've never been a champion. I have still. And he goes, I know what pressure feels like, and I know I need the NXT UK title to begin my legacy. He said, Ilya, I beat you. I will give you no option but to tap. At least he didn't say tap, uh, snap, or sleep, or whatever. Three words he put together which sounded like what Shayna Baszler would say. So at least he said, I'll make you tap. No, I'm going to tap. At least he said that. You know, because it kind of sounded like he took a line from uh, from uh, Shayna Baszler. Now, Mark Andrews looks to skate all over his opponent, Sam Gradwell, in this next match. And uh, although it was a very, very uh, spirited uh, effort on his part, 
very good wrestler. He's very good. Exciting to watch in the ring, Mark uh, Andrews. But uh, Gradwell wins with a powerful fireman's carry to a slam. And he does that very uh, rather impressively to the mat. And what's more impressive is uh, his mohawk uh, gel. You know, he kept his uh, mohawk uh, standing. I mean, it sounds like usually he will get messy about that, but I don't know what kind of gel that is, but it's a pretty good gel to kind of keep his, uh, anything like that. I think uh, Seamus, uh, when he had his mohawk, his mohawk would already be flattened or, you know what I mean? But uh, anyway, uh, that's that with that match. And uh, at least uh, Sam Gradwell won. Guy always brags and boasts about being the first guy ever there in NCUK, but then he never backs it up. Here he did. He backs it up. But then Andrews, the subculture mate, Flash Morgan Webster, uh, he plays tag with Shaw Samuels by tagging him in the face with a slap. But then he rubs, runs away. And I hope it was worth it, Flash, because uh, he had uh, uh, Shaw Samuels run after him, and Shaw Samuels stopped and was just like probably thinking, I'm going to get this motherfucker next week. And probably he does. Uh, it wasn't announced, but we'll see. And um, it's actually uh, announced that next week uh, the UK Championship will take place. You know, NXT UK doesn't have uh, uh, a you know a special event. Uh, they used to have uh, Takeover Blackpool, and even another one. I think Takeover Cardiff, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's where uh, I think that's where um, Tyler Bate uh, challenged Walter, I believe. They should have a special event. I don't know. Maybe they should get involved with the takeovers for you. You know, they did with the okay with the UK Championship, but uh, they need to have some special events, some special pay per views, because uh, they're kind of getting left out. I mean, they're not gonna get. Discovered by anybody if you're just going to rely on uh, this show that, you know, that they show on the, you know, the Peacock Network. Um, but Dragunov has a uh, kind of a response to uh, his opponent, A-Kid. He says he, he respects him, but he says don't be naive. So he's not here to compete. He's the NXT UK champion because he fought for his life, and he's willing to do it again and again and again. He says to him, uh, bring more than just your best, because... That is how uh, he became uh, the czar. That'll be a great match. I'm looking forward to it just because of the fact that these two uh, pretty much match up when it comes to their physicality, when it comes to their intensity, especially how they take it to their opponents. A-Kid is not a guy to be uh, taken lightly. The guy can go, and he's he gave, you know, Rampage Brown and, uh, what do you call it, Frazier, uh, Nathan Frazier, uh, run for it, a run for the money, and also... Defeated both of them. So, Ilya Dragunov, uh, his run might be short, but I don't know. Let's see if uh, he can hold on to that title. But if he comes into it like he did with Walter, uh, A-Kid has no chance. Now, the main event uh, is Noam Dar versus Wolfgang uh, for the NXT UK Heritage Cup number one contenders tournament finals. This tournament has been done, has, was, was quite, done, done quite well. I liked uh, every match. Uh, everybody was matched up pretty good, and I'm glad that these two are matched up because it's kind of like opposites, you know, you know, kind of coming together, opposite styles. But sometimes those things make for a better match. Uh, so uh, in this match, uh, we first start off. Uh, Dar, you know, Norm Dar is being a little bit cocky. He's testing Wolf Walter's Wolfgang's patience, I'm testing mine too. And I appreciate everybody else that was watching this. Um, but Dar is smart and targets the left arm. You remember two weeks ago, that's the arm that uh, he got injured. Uh, shoulder to be exact. And uh, Wolfgang injured, uh, like I said, two, two weeks ago. Uh, but the first round is a draw. Uh, no wonder in the fall. That's usually what happens. I mean, oftentimes, uh, like, that always happens. But we saw in Wolfgang, when he advanced to the finals, he actually got a pinfall in the first round. That's probably a first for, my, for, my, for, my, for what I remember. You know, when I've been watching these Heritage Cup type uh, matches. Uh, and then uh, during the match, uh, going into the uh, second round, uh, Jordan Devlin attacks Joe Coffey. And it, they t also end up uh, fighting back to the, uh, you know, the backstage with the referees in tow trying to break them up. And this distraction, uh, Walter's looking there, I mean, Walter, uh, Wolfgang's looking their way. Uh, and then allows Dar to hit Wolfgang from behind, hit him in the back of his specifically. And rolls him up uh, for the pin. And then Norm Dar uh, takes the second fall. And he goes up one fall to zero. And then you think, okay, he's going to he can do some catching up to do. Wolfgang, what does Wolfgang do? Five seconds into the third round, Wolfgang pins the cocky Norm Dar with an hellacious, brutal spear. He spears him. 
the bell rings. That's as he hit him with a spear and then pins him. And then Wolfgang now evens up everything at one fall apiece. And that may be a record for the fastest fall earned in this tournament or in any history or in the history of uh, this type of match. Um, I can't recall quickly how to, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, Vomdor was a, lot, a, little, a little too cocky, a little too full of himself in this match. And we'll see how, if that does anything to quell his uh, desire to become the number one contender. Now, well scouted, eh, N Nigel? That's what I was saying when uh, Dara voiced the second spear attempt. And I'm like, yeah, didn't he get nailed earlier? So, of course, he's going to be able to avoid it the next time. If you see big old Wolfgang running towards you, what's he going to go for? A spear. He saw it earlier. It's not like it's cut because this is the first one came out of the blue, so of course he can avoid that, right? Well scouted, it was, was it well scouted, really? Really, was it uh, Nigel? You know, but uh, the fourth round uh, ends in uh, time running out. Uh, but it looked at first that uh, Noam Dar beat the refs count. He went in there and it looked like he did. Uh, as he and Wolfgang were outside the ring. Um, Noam Dar goes to kick him as he was against the ring po ring post. And he ends up hitting him, with his, hitting him with his foot. You think he's ripe and easy pickings for Wolfgang. Wolfgang goes to try to spear him. And then Wolfgang, uh, and Noam Dark gets out of the way. And then Wolfgang hits the barricade hard. I mean, up, up against his ability. His left uh, shoulder again. He, he, he looks like he hit that in his back as well. So, uh, you know. So, uh, that right there. No, 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 you know. No, uh, what do you call it? Picked up. It's still uh, one to one, and then now into the fifth round, uh, both men are still tied, like I said, and uh, Wolfgang is hurting because of that collision with the barricade. But man, it's physical in this round. But the bell rings as Wolfgang spears Dar, but a third count was not hit to the mat, and Dar is lucky that Wolfgang didn't have another second on the clock because it would have been Wolfgang advancing to the championship. Now, the sixth round, and I am feeling, now, I'm not feeling of who's going to win, but the question really is, is who wants it more at this point? I was starting to be like, okay, um, is Wolfgang going to pull it out? Uh, picking for him, I, I picked him, and I rooted for him, because I'm a fan of his. I love his uh, work, I love what he does, what he brings to the ring. But it took uh, two Nova rollers from Noam Dar to finally take down Wolfgang. And take the final fall to advance to the championship match with Tyler Bate for the Heritage Cup championship. And the champ Tyler Bate comes out and shows Dar what he is going to try and win from. That beautiful Heritage Cup, which to me, I don't think now I want it to be a belt. I was thinking before, now they should melt that down and make a belt out of it. But I think that brings a little bit more of a difference to it. A little bit of prestige, a little bit of uh, something different to look at than a, than a regular belt. You know what I mean? So uh, I think now I'm starting to come around to the fact that this is now a championship. And uh, I think it's starting to get more and more like acceptable in the sense that, yeah, you know, it's not a traditional belt, but uh, it's something different. And I've always said to myself that the main roster should try to take from this and maybe make some matches that have Heritage Cup rules so that you can make their matches a little more interesting. You know, maybe you'll have only like five matches in the whole raw, uh, thing of Raw because they'll, they'll do like a Heritage Cup thing where it's the rules, you know, the matches will last a little bit longer instead of just quick throwaway matches just to fill up the space. That's what they always do. But uh, anyway, I think that that was a great match. I think that the right person won. I mean, I was pulling for Wolfgang, I know. But uh, I think that it's, he's going to be a great match, uh, Noam Dar to uh, Tyler Bate because they got similar styles. Even though I said that I like when it's different styles, but similar styles... It makes for a more a technical, more uh, ground-based type of a thing. Oh yeah, both these guys can fly, but the Noam Dar is going to have to contend with uh, Tyler Bates' freakish strength. <laughs> that guy's strong as fuck. But then Tyler Bates is going to have to match Noam Dar with his high flying and those kicks and those uh, little stiff elbows and things that he, he likes to throw in there. So that's going to be a great match. I think it's going to be great. Uh, can't wait to see it. But uh, anyway, that is my video for my rundown of thoughts for the October 7th edition of NXT UK where we saw in the main event uh, Noam Dar become the new number one contender for the Heritage Cup whenever that match is going to happen I am definitely looking forward to it but uh, until then uh, that's my video so for those of you who stopped by and checked it out I appreciate it thank you very much and in closing as always take care